SpaceX has revealed a new solution to prevent damage to the launch pad after the 33-engine Starship Super Heavy reportedly destroyed much of the facility during its maiden orbital test. Upon launch, the massive force generated by the rocket caused the pavement to rip and form a giant crater. In today's video, let's talk about this new solution and how effective it will be. Will the FAA allow SpaceX to launch the rocket again? The future of space travel has arrived, and it's called SpaceX Starship. This incredible machine is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk in 2002 with the goal of reducing the cost of space transportation and making space accessible to everyone. Over the years, SpaceX has achieved many milestones, including becoming the first privately funded company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station and the first company to reuse a rocket. With the Starship program, SpaceX is taking its vision one step further. The Starship is the next step in SpaceX's journey to make space travel a reality for everyone. The spacecraft has been designed from the ground up with the goal of making space travel affordable and accessible to all. The Starship is the key to unlocking the final frontier and making space travel a common occurrence. The Starship is a reusable spacecraft that has been designed to carry both cargo and people to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The spacecraft is made up of two main components, the Super Heavy Rocket Booster and the Starship spacecraft. The Super Heavy Rocket Booster is responsible for providing the initial thrust to escape Earth's gravity, and then the Starship takes over to carry out the rest of the mission. The ship is designed to be fully reusable, which means that it can be used multiple times, reducing the cost of space travel significantly. This makes it possible for us to explore the final frontier like never before. Reports suggest that SpaceX will use a water-cooled steel plate for its next rocket launch that can withstand the world's most powerful liftoff after the debut attempt of its Starship rocket to reach space caused extensive launch pad damage. The giant spacecraft exploded 23 miles in the sky, minutes after liftoff in an uncrewed test flight on Thursday. On the ground at SpaceX's launch site in Texas, the rocket's engines, there are over 30, fired with more force than any other rocket in the world, violently pummeling its launch pad floor as it slowly took flight. That blasted a crater several feet deep and sent large chunks of reinforced concrete flying thousands of feet. Elon Musk has stated that SpaceX had started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it would not have been ready before the launch on April 20th. He suggested it would be ready for installation before the next launch attempt in one to two months. Musk also said SpaceX wrongly thought that the Launchpad Foundation would survive a single launch, even though the engines during the test fired at half their power. The billionaire CEO had said in 2020 that there would be no need to use such a flame diverter to steer the flames on the ground, but acknowledged that could be the wrong direction. Other launch sites in the United States, such as SpaceX's own pads at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, use flame diverters, which are large, cavernous hallways leading away from a rocket's underside to steer its tail of fiery forces in a controlled path aimed at minimizing damage. Without such a plan, debris kicked up during liftoff could strike the rocket itself and compromise a mission. The latest SpaceX failure illustrated a rocket development culture at the company that embraces fast-paced tests and failures of prototypes that provide data to improve the vehicle's design. The Federal Aviation Administration, which regulates launch site safety and oversees technical investigations into commercial rocket mishaps, will need to sign off on changes to Starship's launch pad infrastructure before its next launch attempt. A fully stacked Starship left the ground on April 20th for the first time, and it came to an explosive end high in the Texas sky. With a mighty roar, the first ever integrated Starship rocket soared towards space from SpaceX's seaside Starbase facility at Boca Chica Beach on South Texas's Gulf Coast at 9.33 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The majestic rocket came to an ugly end as it consumed itself in an orange and white fireball just four minutes after launch and 24 miles above the Gulf of Mexico. As maiden voyages go, it was not pretty. The 165-foot Starship upper stage was supposed to separate from the Super Heavy first stage about three minutes after liftoff, but that never happened. The two vehicles remained connected, and the stack began to tumble, ultimately exploding or experiencing what SpaceX calls a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. This destruction was intentional, ordered after Starship experienced those problems. 
the vehicle experienced multiple engine failures during the flight test, lost altitude, and began to tumble. The flight termination system was commanded on both the booster and the ship. But the employees gathered at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California to watch the launch let out a massive cheer at Starship's demise, celebrating the gains made on its first ever liftoff. The giant vehicle reached a maximum altitude of about 24 miles according to the data on SpaceX's launch webcast. It was SpaceX's second attempt to launch Starship. An initial try on April 17th ended in a scrub due to a frozen valve. The flight plan on the 20th called for Super Heavy to come back to Earth in the Gulf of Mexico roughly eight minutes into the flight. The upper stage, meanwhile, was supposed to fire up at six Raptors to head up to the final frontier and a planned partial trip around our planet. The goal was to get Starship to a maximum altitude of about 145 miles, then bring it barreling back into Earth's atmosphere for a trial-by-fire re-entry, ending with a hard splashdown in the Pacific Ocean, not far from the Hawaiian island of Kauai about 90 minutes after liftoff. SpaceX wasn't expecting everything to work out, however. New rockets often fail on their first test flight, and Starship is far bolder and more complex than most launchers. Rather, this test was all about gathering data and responding properly to whatever ended up happening, company representatives stressed. In the days since, much virtual ink has been spilled, both applauding the launch and condemning its failure. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson was among the first to congratulate SpaceX. He stated that every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk because with great risk comes great reward. The rest of the Twitterverse wasn't as sanguine, with many people labeling this test as reckless and rushed. But whether the Starship explosion was a successful failure, as some have dubbed it, or just a failure, period, the causes of the incident still have to be determined. That question must be answered soon if SpaceX hopes to launch another Starship in anywhere close to the few months SpaceX founder and boss Elon Musk promised in a tweet immediately after the aborted flight. Musk's tweet barely had time to go public before the FAA announced it was temporarily grounding the entire Starship fleet, stating that an anomaly occurred during the ascent and prior to stage separation, resulting in a loss of the vehicle. The statement said that a return to flight of the Starship Super Heavy Vehicle is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. Clearing that FAA hurdle will require SpaceX to take a deep dive into the telemetry that streamed down from the Starship during its brief flight. This much is clear. Of the 33 engines that power the rocket's first stage, flight video reveals that at least eight failed to fire. In a February 9th static fire test, during which the engines were ignited with the rocket anchored to the ground, 31 of the 33 worked as planned. Elon Musk tweeted that the team turned off one engine just before starting and one stopped itself, so 31 engines fired overall. These were still enough to reach orbit. That may be true when 31 engines are firing, but not a mere 25. Had the Starship's engine worked as planned last week, the first stage would have separated and fallen back to Earth at the three-minute point of the flight, leaving nine engines on the second stage to carry the rest of the spacecraft to space. Instead, it was at that moment that the rocket went into an uncontrolled tumble that lasted for a full and harrowing minute. At the end of that minute, the rocket blew up. The loss of the rocket itself was not the only harm done that day. The launch pad suffered serious damage as bowling ball-sized chunks of concrete were broken loose and flung about from the force of the engines that did ignite. As the New York Times, Texas Public Radio, and others reported, in Port Isabel, Texas, a city six miles from SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site, buildings shook, at least one window shattered, and a cloud of sandy debris rained down on the residents and their homes. SpaceX is not pretending that solutions to all the problems that arose on April 20th will come soon, and after-action reports and repairs like the one the company is faced with are typically slow, painstaking affairs. Many are asking why didn't the Starship separate as planned? Why did a few engines fail on the booster phase? What will be done to mitigate launch area damage on future missions? All good questions, and there are others too. The second stage of the rocket didn't even get a chance to try flying, after all, so there's no way of knowing yet if there are design flaws buried within it that will be revealed only on subsequent tests after the problems in the first stage are worked out. And if 25 engines can do the kind of damage they did to Port Isabel, what will happen when the full complement of 33 do successfully light in tandem? Especially since even with just a portion of its engines burning, Starship's April 20th flight still made it the most powerful rocket ever launched.
For now, SpaceX is keeping its head down, trying to solve its problems, make its repairs, and satisfy the FAA, which holds the ultimate leash on future Starship flights. There are many who continue to believe the company has the wherewithal to do that and that Starship has a bright future. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about how a ULA rocket suddenly exploded at the launch pad. Do you think SpaceX should build a new launch pad for the Starship? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.